Hello, my name is Sai, and today I'll be teaching you how to create this wind text particle system using DaVinci Resolve. Before we hop into Fusion, I will break down the process of what makes this particle system. We'll start by creating a basic particle system that moves the particles similarly to being in the wind, using a P emitter, velocity, and P turbulence. And then we'll grab a text plus node and create a randomly generated sprite that creates a new character per frame for the P emitter use when spawning in new particles. And then we'll modify the P emitter to stylize the particles to our liking. Now that we've got that brief explanation out of the way, let's get right into it. So first we're gonna start by grabbing a text plus node. And then we're gonna go over to the text box over here, right click and find text scramble. We're gonna go to the modifier over here. We're gonna go into this main text box here and just type in one character. Run it into the substitute characters. We're going to type in the word that we want. So I'm just going to type in wind for this. And we're going to go over to the randomness and set that to one and then uncheck the randomness checkbox. So now every frame, there's a new character. So if we had the randomness checkbox left on, it would be uh, inconsistent and creates randomness between each frame. And it would inconsistently change the character every frame. And now I'm just going to go back to the tools over here. I'm just going to trip the size a little bit. I'm going to change the font to Arial. Let's do Arial Bold. Um, I think that looks nice. And we're going to add an auto domain node. So now that we have this in here, it's going to make sure that the text plus node only renders out the characters that are needed. So all this extra space won't be rendered out, just the area where the characters are being spawned in or generated. Um, we can view this domain of definition by going into the three dots on the top right and going under region and then going into show DOD or domain of definition. And then we can just update the frame by moving it. And now we can see with each frame change, the domain is only rendering out th this area. The rest of this area is just not being rendered out at all. So then once we have this created, we can start by creating our particle system. Let's grab a basic P emitter, a P renderer, and then we'll just kind of start messing with the settings inside of here. So it starts out with a sphere. I'm gonna do a cube, increase the height a little bit, trim the depth, increase the width a little bit. We have this. I'm gonna go back to the controls over here. I'm gonna set the number to one and just turn up the number variance a little bit because I just want one particle per frame with a slight variation between uh, each particle being spawned in. Um, and I'm just going to mess around with the uh, velocity, rotation, spin, and uh, position uh, values for a little bit. So my composition size is 215 frames. So I'm just going to set the lifespan to about 140 or so um, frames. I'm just going to turn up this lifespan variance so each particle doesn't last as long as the previous particle um, or another particle that spawned on another point in time. We're going to go to the position variance and turn this up and we're going to set the temporal distribution to randomly distributed. So inside this cube, each particle will be more randomly distributed amongst each other. And we're going to go into the velocity over here and just turn this up a little bit. So now it's moving to the side. I'm just going to turn up a little bit and turn up the variance a little bit. So each particle is moving at its own pace. We can go into the angle Z variance and turn that up just a little bit so each particle is kind of moving into their own direction and then for the rotation this isn't we're not going to notice this now but once we apply the text character onto each individual particle we'll notice this a little bit better so for now i'm actually going to leave these um untouched until we add the text to the particles so i think this looks pretty nice uh, maybe turn up the uh we'll turn up the angle variance, just the regular angle variance. So this is every uh, X and Y angle, and this is the Z angle. Um, I think this looks pretty good for me. I'm also going to add a P turbulence node um, and add some variance between the Y and Z. So there's just a little bit more movement going on. Uh, and then I'll also add a P friction as well. And I'm going to use an expression to link the spin friction and the velocity friction. We're gonna go over to the conditions over here, set the probability to about 0.5. So there's about a 50% chance that the particles will be stopped. And I'm just going to turn up this age uh, start a little bit. So it starts later into the composition. So about one third of the way through the composition, the 
there's a 50% chance that there will be friction in the movement of the particles. Uh, start a little bit earlier. Let's turn it up just a tiny bit. I'm not seeing enough being stopped. I think that looks nice. Um, so now we're going to add these text characters into the particle system. So what we're going to do is go into the P emitter, go to the style, and we're going to set the style to bitmap, and then set the animate to particle birth time. And we're just going to drag this auto domain output into the input of the P emitter. So now on each new frame or each new particle, whatever the current frame is or whatever the character that's generated for that frame. So on frame 35, it's D. So whatever particle is being spawned in on frame 35 will have that um, character spawned in. Um, and now it looks, it looks pretty random. Um, but I'm going to show you some other things you can add to this to make it look just a little better um, overall. So going back into the style page over here, we're going to go over to the color controls, go to the color variance. We're just going to set the uh, low variance of every value to negative one. So now between each particle, there's a chance of it being uh, having a lower opacity um, compared to every other particle. We're also going to go back to the controls over here and we're going to start messing around with the rotation and spin value. So the Z rotation is what we're going to be messing around with here. So we're just going to turn up the Z rotation and turn up the variance. So each one is rotated a little bit differently. And we're going to the spin here and just set this to like one or so. It's kind of, it's very finicky and strong. See if I set it up to 21, it's it's pretty, pretty noticeable. I'm just going to turn it down a little bit. Let's do, do two. Um, I think this is a good value to start out with. And then we can turn up the Z variance um, on that spin. So then there's a little bit of variance between each movements. And now going back into the style tab, we're going to go into the size controls and just turn down this base size a tiny bit. We're going to turn up the size variance. So there's uh, a variation in these sizes between each particle. I just think it looks, this looks pretty nice for now, but the particles spawn in kind of awkwardly. They just kind of pop out of nowhere. We're going to go into the fade controls and turn up the fade in and turn down the fade out. So now the particles have a fade in animation and as they reach the end of their lifespan, they will start to fade out. Um, but yeah, that's basically it. If you have any questions, um, let me know. I'll try to answer them as soon as possible. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed.